that okay today is a monday so i am going to release video on binomial theorem okay until tomorrow it is permutations and combinations but we have completed the topic so i am going to release a video on binomial theorem okay theorem what is the theorem the binomial theorem is a theorem that shows the way or the way to find the formula for x plus a whole power n or it is a formula for finding x plus a whole power n okay let's see what is the formula and how can we understand it and how can we prove that okay if x and a are real numbers then for all n belongs to natural numbers x plus a whole power n is equal to n c is zero okay here n c is zero means combination with n possibilities and zero boxes n c is zero we learned about combinations in our previous topic right it is n c is zero x power n a power zero plus n c one x power n minus one a power one plus n c two x power n minus two a square Plus and so on until n c r x power n minus r a power r plus and so on until n c n minus one x power one a power n minus one plus n c n x power zero a power n. Okay, this is pretty long formula, right? Okay, here in middle we kept and so on and then we represented the term in middle somewhere in the middle. Why we have represented that? Okay, this is the r plus one -th term in a binomial theorem or in a expand in expansion of a plus a whole power n. This is the r plus one -th term. Okay, you will discuss about that later. First, let's see how can we write that easy way. Okay, here there are so many sums, right? For the sums, there is a concept called as summation. You may have learned this. summation is represented with capital of a greek letter sigma greek letter sigma in a capital way you can write it like x plus a whole power n is equal to you shouldn't read that like sigma we should read that as summation summation r is equal to 0 to r is equal to n n c r x power n minus r a power r Okay, here r is equal to zero and n means that r can have values from r is equal to zero to r is equal to n. As you can see in this formula, r can have values from zero to n. So you can represent that in this way. Okay, now without proof it will be difficult to remember that, right? So let's see how to prove that. Okay, how can we prove that? Think of it for yourself. Okay, for proving that there is a concept called as mathematical induction in mathematics there is a concept called as mathematical induction okay let's see what is that for what is that what is that part of mathematics and let's see how to derive this with that okay guys in mathematical induction we should use mathematical induction on n for the given formula okay in mathematical induction how we will solve the theorems or how we will prove the theorems using mathematical induction is by substituting the value 1 in the expansion and checking whether it is right or not and next we will imagine that it is true for any other value like m k you can take any variable we should imagine that it is right for P of m, and then we should prove that it is right for p of m plus one. Okay, let's see how can we prove that with this. Okay, in some states, mathematical induction is an in important chapter. They dis they kept mathematical induction as a chapter. Okay, let's see how to solve this equation by using mathematical induction. Okay. P of n statement is this, as you can see, as we saw this before. 
he is the statement for p of n now we should show that it is true by mathematical induction okay as we discussed before first we should make sure that it is right for p of 1 or if you substitute value of 1 in any in n variable here we take p of n so if you substitute 1 in the n variable the equation should be right let's see if we substitute n x plus a whole power n what will it become x plus a whole power 1 right and this expansion what it will be nc0 plus nc nc1 and the remaining term in x and then nc2 but here there are up to nc1 right because n is 1 so you'll get 1c0 x power 1 a power 0 plus 1c1 x power 0 a power 1 okay 1c0 means 1 factorial by 0 factorial into 1 factorial as you know the formula to find combinations that is n factorial by r factorial into n minus r factorial okay we have discussed about that in previous videos on permutations and combinations if you haven't yet go check it out 1c0 is 1 and 1c1 is also 1 1 by 1 factorial into 0 factorial okay another thing this 0 factorial is not 0 0 factorial is 1 and here we have a power 0 in first term means it is 1 no need to represent that in second term we have x power 0 it is also 1 no need to represent so we got x plus a means x plus a whole power 1 is x plus a we all know that right so p of 1 is true and we should imagine that it is true for p of m just substitute m in place of n and then write the equation and imagine that as equation 1 now we should prove that p of m plus 1 is true for this what can we do for this what can we do to prove that p of m plus 1 is true okay now x plus a whole power m plus 1 it will be x plus a into x power m right means you should multiply the full equation with x power a if you multiply if you want multiply that if we multiply that we will get the following equation if we multiply that we will get the following equation this is how to prove this okay you can think like in a logical way means without proving this how can we think in a logical way that this is right some members may ask this right you you may ask what is the logical way to think of this instead of doing this big process okay if you think logically then we should multiply x plus a n terms n times right means then in middle we will form some combinations like this x power n into a power 0 x power n minus 1 into a power 1 you will form those terms and there will be some collection of those terms a group of those terms so we use the concept combinations you can think of that in your own way okay now let's see some other topic and there is some remark for this that is the above expansion is also valid when x and a are complex numbers. Mean this is also true if x and a are complex numbers. Okay, now let's see some properties of combinations. Okay, the other thing, if you want how to simplify that, you can see here. See this. If you expand them, you'll get n c 0 x power n a power 0 m c 1 plus m c 0 x power m a power 1 m c 2 plus m c 1 x power m minus 1 a square plus and so on until m c r plus m c r minus 1 x power m minus r plus 1 into a power r plus m c m minus 1 plus m c m x power 1 a power m plus m c m a power m plus 1 okay here you have like x power 1 plus m c 1 plus m c 0 m c 2 plus m c 1 m c r 
properties of binomial expansion there are some properties in binomial expansion let's see what are those properties you may have figured this on your own okay let's see first property property 1 is express a whole power n is summation of r is equal to 0 to n n c r x power n minus r a power r since r can have values from 0 to n the total number of terms in the expansion is n plus 1 okay you may have noticed this on your own right it have total of n plus 1 terms because r can have values from 0 to n 1 to n is n and 0 is added so you'll get n plus 1 and the sum of indices of x and a in each term is n okay you may have noticed this too right the indices of x will be increasing and the indices of a will be decreasing or if you see this general form if we add those you will get n minus r plus r which is nothing but n so it will have the sum of x, indices of x and a in each term is n and ncr is equal to nc n minus r if r is in between 0 1 2 3 up to n anything that implies nc0 is equal to ncn, nc1 is equal to ncn minus 1, nc2 is equal to nc n minus 2 and so on. So the coefficients of term equidistant from the beginning and the end are equal. Those coefficients are known as binomial coefficients. Okay now, the next property is you, you have learned the formula for explicit whole power and you may be wondering what will be the formula for x minus a whole power n? What if there is minus symbol? Means for a plus b whole square you have one formula and for a minus b whole square you have one formula. So we need for minus 2, right? So you can just find that by, you can think of it easily. Just substitute minus a in place of a. You will get the required equation. Okay, let's see. It implies x, play, x minus a whole power n will be n c 0 x power n a power 0 a how? Negative a here right? Negative a power 0 or a power 0 is same. But here negative a whole power 1 which is nothing but negative a or minus a. So you will get minus symbol for the whole term. But in a square negative will get cancelled out. So you will get plus and so on until minus 1 whole power r n c r x power n minus r a power r and so on plus minus 1 whole power n n c n x power 0 a power n or in, you can write like general term right that is x minus a whole power n is equal to summation of r is equal to 0 to n minus 1 whole power r n c r x power n minus r a power r here the just term added is minus 1 whole power r okay why is it added if we should represent negative and positive signs term after the after each terms means like first term will get plus second term minus third term plus you can just use minus 1 whole power r the terms of x minus a are alternatively positive or negative the last term is positive or negative how to find whether the last term is positive or negative? Okay, it is dependent on n, whether n is even or odd. If n is odd, it will be negative. If n is even, it will be positive. And now the next property is, you may have wondering, will there be any formula for 1 plus x whole power n? Okay, actually there is no need of formula for that. You can just substitute a value as 1. You will get the answer. But I, let's prove how to get that formula. You can j simply put 1 in place of x and x in place of a, right? Or you may ask what if we leave x the same and keep the value 1 in place of a? But if you think of it carefully, you want the formula for 1 minus x whole power n too, right? If you want 1 minus x whole power n, but if we take that way, you will get x minus 1 whole power n. So, let us take x is equal to 1 and a is equal to x. So, 1 plus x whole power n will be nc0 plus nc1 x plus nc2 x square plus and so on until ncr x power r 
plus and so on until n c n x four n. Okay, you may not be able to see the last term because of this cropping. Okay, it is n c n x four n. And you can write that simply like one plus x whole power n is equal to n summation of r is equal to zero n n c r x four r. Okay, here there is no there is no x term, right? X is just one. So it will be easy. No need to mention that. Okay, in the expansion of one plus x whole power n, x will be in ascending powers. Means x will have ascending powers. Okay, now let's see our next property. Okay, now our next property is how to get one plus x whole power n in an other way. That is just put a is equal to one as we discussed before. Just put a is equal to one, then you will get one plus x whole power n. One plus x or x plus one, both are same. Because the addition have commutative law. One plus x whole power n is equal to n c zero x power n plus n c one x power n minus one plus n c two x power n minus two plus and so on until n c r x power n minus r plus and so on until n c n minus one x plus n c n. There is no need to mention one, right? Or generally you can write like. One plus x whole power n is equal to summation of r is equal to zero to n n c r x power n minus r. Okay, before you got n c r x power r, but now we got n c r x power n minus r because those both are same. Okay, why are they same? Because here we have n c r, right? You can write like n c r like n c n minus r, right? Because those two are equal. If you write it like n c n minus r, x should have n minus r, right? So we write it in that way, and we change it this to back to normal. So we get the following formula, and both are same. This is the expansion of one plus x power n in descending powers. Okay, now putting x is equal to one, a is equal to minus x, we will get the formula for. One minus x whole power n. That is n c zero plus minus n c one x plus n c two x square plus n c three x cube plus and so on until minus one whole power r n c r x power r plus and so on until minus one whole power n n c n x x power n. This is the basic formula. You can write that in the form of summation. It will be one minus x whole power n is equal to summation of r is equal to zero. Two n minus one whole power r, n c r x power r. This is the basic term. Okay, now let's see another. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. The next property is the coefficient of r plus one the term in the expansion of one plus x whole power n is n c r. The coefficient of r plus one the term will be n c r. Okay, the other thing, the coefficient of r plus one is n c r in any expansions, and the coefficient of x power r in the expansion one plus x whole power n is n c r. The coefficient of x power r is n c r, but the r plus one the term. The coefficient of x power r is n c r. This means that r plus one the term have the x plus r in that term. Okay, the property ten is x plus a whole power n plus x minus a whole power n. What will it be? It will be two into n c zero x power n a power zero plus n c two x power n minus two a square plus and so on. Means the middle terms will be cancelled out. If we subtract them, the same, but you will get even terms. Means n c one means it is the second term, fourth term, and like that. Okay. If n is odd, then those two terms we discussed before will have same number of terms. Means equal number of terms. 
which are equal to n plus 1 by 2. Whereas if n is even, x plus a whole power n plus x minus a whole power n has n by 2 plus 1 terms and the other have n by 2 terms. Now let's see, now let's see the general term and some other topics. General term in the expansion, okay, in the above expansion, as we know, r plus 1 term is ncr, x power n minus r, a power r. Thus, if t r plus 1 denotes r plus 1 term, t r plus 1 is equal to ncr, x power n minus r, a power r. This is called a general term because by giving different values to r, we can determine all terms in the expansion. Similarly, in x minus a whole power n, it will be minus 1 whole power r, n c r, x power n minus r, a power r. Now, let us see another topic. Okay, another thing is, in binomial expansion of x plus a whole power n, the rth term from the end is n plus 1 minus r plus 1 n plus 1 minus r plus 1. So, why is that? n plus r total terms minus r because r th term and we should add plus 1 because in general term we will discuss r plus 1th term, right? So, we should add plus 1. It should be n minus r plus 2th term from the beginning. Okay, middle term in a binomial expansion. What is the middle term in the binomial expansion? If n is even, then the middle term is n by 2 plus 1th term. If n is odd, then n plus 1 by 2 and n plus 3 by 2 terms are the middle terms in the binomial expansion of x plus a whole power n. Means you will have two middle terms. Because if n is odd, you will have even number of terms because total terms are n plus 1. The same goes to even. Okay guys, this is for today's video. If you like the video, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, ring that bell icon, it's not for you, when I release any video. If you have any doubts, comment down below, I will answer them in the next video.